Hi, I'm Richard and in today's tutorial we'll finish off the logic for the dungeon chamber and refactor some code. So let's get started. OK, hello and welcome back and thank you as ever for persevering. So before we continue with this tutorial, I would like to say a massive thank you to everybody that's been supporting me, liking and subscribing these videos. I've not I'm not doing this uh, to become some YouTube sensation. I'm doing it because I know a little bit about Blender. I know a little bit about C Sharp. And I'm going on a journey. So I'd like you, I really appreciate that everybody's joining me and putting some very, very kind words in. So thank you very much. And I don't want to go bang on about it too much, but it's just, I'm in awe of the people that are uh, following these, these, these tutorials. And uh, I'm very, very much appreciated. So let's move on. What I've done here, you can see now that we've made some progress since the last tutorial. Uh, this is going to be one of those where I'm going to just talk you through what I've done rather than go through it because I think it would be too painful to do that. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the chamber is now in place and that also, potentially, if you're very eagle-eyed, it's slightly bigger. Slightly bigger than the rest of it. And the reason for that was, I actually, when I created it, and you'll see in a few moments, uh, if it's actually the same size as these tunnels, it doesn't look right at all. Uh, in order to do this, the first thing I realised was I'd made a mistake from the previous tutorial, and that is that uh, I was assuming horizontal lines uh, uh, at the top and the bottom, and vertical lines on the left and the right. Now, this isn't correct because the vertical lines uh, don't cover the fact that um, one wall points inwards or to the right, and one wall, wall, the other wall points to the left. Let me just quickly bring this one up here. Hang on, click that. So we'll bring this up here. Let's bring this into here. You can see here now what I've done is I've created some additional, or I've used different characters to define which type of wall it is, whether it's a right facing wall or a left facing wall. You might say, well, hang on, it's not attach attached to anything. And it, I would, that isn't the intention of these ones. This little arrow, this little point here is indicating which way it should be facing. All right, it's not expected to face into these at symbols. As usual, we've got our arrows, uh, but, that, but that's basically. Um, <clears throat> the changes I had to make. So in order to make those changes, I had to go in to uh, um, Mono Develop, obviously, and under the Map Generator, uh, spin to the top. Just find the the code that creates the walls uh, here. And no, no, where's the where is the um, where's the code that creates the dungeon? Sorry, I probably should have had this. There it is. There it is. There it is. So now you can see. Look, I've created these bits here to create. This is all very manual at the minute, isn't it? But uh, we might get a bit more funky about how we do this. But now we've got uh, um, these double-sided UTF characters, and with that, then I had to um, the traverse uh, cells logic was updated to include these new in, inside the dungeon chamber, so that so now it will go inside there as well and have a look around. Okay, we've got all of our different possibilities. Uh, they they tie in nicely actually with the existing tunnels, so I just I was able to reuse the same calls if you like for each of these pieces here, and. I had, obviously the dreaded friends. I had to update these to show all of the possible characters that could uh, could be added to the different points there. All right, uh, nothing particularly magical there. They, they used to contain at symbols, and wherever there was an at, I simply just copied the uh, um, the chamber characters that could be used. All right, so there's nothing. I think actually, for instance, this one here is a right hand uh, symbol, and you would never have above it uh, that one. Okay, there's no way that would be going above it because um, it's pointing into it, so it's just not going to happen. Uh, I can go into detail on that if you like, but there's no no real need. Um, all of them about all of them need uh, can be considered to be, you know, appropriate friends on either side. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, please let me know. This is this is uh, if I'd done this again, I'd probably rethink this. This this here, if I ever have to look at this again, I'm probably going to cry trying to remember how on earth I did it. Um, the other thing I did, realising now that we were getting to the stage now where we're getting a lot of these different uh, characters that, re that represent each piece, uh, was that I thought, well, I'm going to need to d find a better way to lay these down. So what I did, let me just stop this script here, is I created a new, uh, very small script called Dungeon Character Mapping. And it's a one line, I don't even, even know, know if I need to show you in MonoDevelop, but let's do it in MonoDevelop anyway. Uh, make it a bit bigger. Uh, it just literally contains one variable, part public char character mapping. And the idea being that every single prefab shape in the chamber would have a reference to this dungeon character mapping script with the appropriate character that it maps to. 
you see so you've got a left hand side you've got the right hand side the corner you see is the is the is the uh, double corner there this is the, in the chamber this is the dungeon um Oh, I call it chamber. There we go. <laughs> so you can see those there, and in the tunnels themselves, if I just pick a corner, look, you can see this is this symbol here represents the bottom right-hand corner, and so on. So now every single possible character that could be in here, okay, apart from O, okay, which we'll come to shortly, but uh, apart from O, every one of them can be represented uh, is referenced by this dungeon character mapping script. So what the all the dungeon creation needs to do now is find the one that's uh, the game object that maps to that character that it's looking at and, and instantiate it. And let me show you how I did that. If I go over to here, what I did to start with was create a new uh, list. Okay, if type game object dungeon shapes, and to do that you need this generic class here. So that allowed me to go back into Unity here. If I did game manager. I've got all of my dungeon shapes, so you can see I've got every single possible one. So all of the tunnels and all of the dungeon, uh, all of the chamber or dungeon room characters are all there. All right, so they're all every single one now is there. And as you, as I just mentioned, each one of them has a reference to this script, uh, to this character, which which defines which character it's uh, it maps to. All right. So if we go back into here, um, what I do is I create a dictionary. And this, what the purpose of a dictionary, if you don't know, is just, it's like a key value pair. It allows me to create a character and a game object that relates to that character. Now, what would have been brilliant is if I, if I could have done this in the inspector, but you can't. So um, the, the way you do it is you'll, we'll, we'll, instant, we'll, we'll use this list here, and then we'll create the dictionary in a few, a few seconds' time. So I broke down the start uh, function a little bit because it was getting too large. Um, the, the generate dungeon is the uh, I'll, I'll come back to the top one in a second. But the generate dungeon is the piece that looks you know that creates a dungeon, checks to see what size it is, and if it's happy, then it'll finish. And then uh, display map as before, and instantiate dungeon pieces is the bit that creates that instantiates all of the uh, all of the pieces of the dungeon, unsurprisingly. But let's look at this one here, London, London, London dungeon. By the way, is brilliant, but that's not what <laughs> that's not what we're talking about today. Highly recommend London dungeons though. It's one of my favourite. Um, uh, tourist sites in in London. If you ever get a chance, right? Anyway, load dungeon character mappings. Um, perhaps I should, I should how I should model it. I'm getting off target. Okay, so if we go to lo load dungeon character mappings, F12, and then here it is. What it does is it says for each object in the dungeon shapes, i.e., in that one here, get that dungeon character mapping script. Okay, so this 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 get component here assumes that every single one has a dungeon character mapping script attached to it. If it doesn't, this is going to blow up. Uh, so um, perhaps I should put some defensive coding in there. But for now, I haven't. Okay, so each one of them has a character mapping uh, um, script, and therefore we can go and get the character mapping that it refers to. And then we can update our dictionary by saying, for this character that we've just got, this is the dungeon shape that relates to it. All right, so now we've got a reference for each of these has a reference to each of the different characters. All right. So with that done, what we can then do is um, instantiate dungeon pieces. So I've just press F12 here. Um, we can go through through the rows and the columns as normal. Get the character in that row and column. Check to see do we have that character. Okay, it does that character exist in our list? Now a good example of one that doesn't is O. All right, and we need to work on that. Okay, so it's not going to create anything there because it does, it, there is no O um, shape, if you like. Uh, so we need to work on that bit. Or it hasn't been visited. All right, so if it hasn't been visited um, or um, there's no character for it, then continue. Uh, if, if there is a character for it and it has been visited, then we'll go and get this, this key here. This one here will return a, a game object instance. And then we can very simply call instantiate that object at the at the row and column position times 12 we did that before all right and keep its rotation and that is it that's a lot cleaner than it was before do you remember i don't know if you remember but we had a lot of if this then ignore then if then then ignore well now we can just say well we've mapped everything to to a um, to a shape so we can just click play and bang there it is and in fact we can even traverse it look this is a funky looking map isn't it this one here um Beautiful. And we can actually, let me just do this. Let me just quickly go to that. And then I should be able, if I click back into here, 
Let's just see. Am I going the right way? No, I'm going the wrong way. That's a complete dead end. I'm going to try and tidy this up so we're not always going down a, a beaten path. Come on, let's press shift to go a bit quicker. This is first right, isn't it? Then right again. And then, what's that? Right? Left? <laughs> Come on. Sometimes I've noticed it gets stuck. I need to look at why that's happening. I'll travel down here. Travel down here. And we can look left. And look, there's the outside. Look at this. We can have a little peek outside. Look, here's one of those things that we'll need to work on. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? I've never seen that before from the first person shooter. First person um, camera. I've never bothered to, to look at that. Right, let's go back in here. And here is our massive dungeon chamber. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but there's initially there's a problem. Um, is that I've got the colliders in the wrong place now. Because I made this a bit bigger. Oh, even better look. I'm actually able to fall through the world. Now, I wasn't able to do that before. That's quite upsetting. So I need to work on the box colliders. That's fine. I can work on those uh, in the background. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. Just a bit of a laborious task to get the box colliders in the right position. All right. And that is actually all I've done. So... And like I say, I just made I made the the, the things a bit bigger in, um, hey, 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 where are you? In Blender. Here's what I did in Blender. All right. I, obviously, I'll um, with the Unity package will contain a link to this Blend file as well. And so these are all the pieces. So they're slightly slightly wider out. And for that, I had to adjust the box colliders. So I'll have to adjust them again. And that is it, people. That is it. Now we're almost there, almost there. We need to work on these O's to, to block this stuff off. I have noticed that occasionally these things just don't, there's nothing that can go in there, and I think I know how to fix that, or at least make it happen less often. Uh, this is a really bad one, isn't it? Yeah, you can see there's a lot of O's at the bottom there. All right. That's okay, because um, we'll we'll work on, I'll, sh I'll show you, I've had a thought about how we can fix this, or at least, you know, create a, create a dead end for it. And that's it, people. That is it. That is today's very, very short, but I hope very informative tutorial. I will create a link to the Unity package that you can use, and then we can um, we can finally work on texturing this thing once we've got those dead ends sorted. I think that'll be very, very quick, and then we can texture it, and, and then it'll start to look like something amazing. So thank you, as always, for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. All the best.